I can bet my bum that you have experienced remembering everything you study on the days leading up to an exam and on the exam day you're also able to recall everything that you have studied but then two days later poof, everything is gone why exactly does that happen well this is partially due to the zygarnik effect and in this video i'll be showing you guys how exactly you can use the exact same zygarnik effect and apply this to studying and take it to a whole new level what's cooking sapiens welcome back to the tribe now first of all let's start off by explaining what exactly this zygarnik effect really is so the idea is that when you start doing a task and then you leave that task unfinished the task continues to wander in your mind and in your thoughts and this force makes you want to go back and complete that task and that's exactly why while you're reading a novel or a book you want to flip to the next page very fast and you know try and complete that entire book or when you are let's say bored and you just think okay you know what i'm gonna just watch one episode of my favorite tv show on netflix so you just switch on netflix lay on your couch and then boom the next time you take eyes off the screen three hours have already passed and you've already binge watched i don't know like the entire series and that's why our minds have this urge or it won't let you stay in peace unless you complete whatever you are doing now this phenomenon was first discovered by a russian psychologist bluma Zygarnik, who was sitting and having lunch at a cafe in Vienna where she made this observation that the waiters who were working over there they could remember the orders of the customers who had not paid the bill yet much better compared to the like and much better and once the order was paid the waiters had problem remembering the order of those particular customers so once the bill was paid aka once the task was completed the waiters had problem remembering the information in that task and in 1927 she published her work on finished and unfinished tasks where she conducted a number of experiments and for example she would have all these different groups and then she would assign the same task to these different groups and then she would allow one of those groups or like some of these groups to complete their tasks uninterrupted while she would interrupt the other groups while they were working on their tasks and now one hour later she would ask them to recall the details and information related to that very task that they were assigned and she found out that the uninterrupted group performed worse compared to the groups who were interrupted by her while they were working on their task so the group that was interrupted by her was twice as likely to remember the information and details compared to the one which was not interrupted and then in the 1960s further research was done on this topic by john badley who was a memory researcher and he also supported the findings of uh, bluma zygarnik however there have also been studies which do not support uh, the zygarnik effect so that so the research on this or the studies on this have been sort of like a seesaw up and down in favor of um, the zygarnik effect now the way this works is that every time you start doing a task it creates this certain level of cognitive tension and this tension allows us to focus on the task at hand and the thing is that whenever you learn some information or you know you gain anything of importance related to that very task that information is stored in our is easily stored in our working or short-term memory so that that information is easily recallable or accessible if you need that information while doing that very task and here's the deal so once you finish the task that cognitive tension releases and the brain rewards you with what we what we call as the peace of mind however when we interrupt that task or we leave the task unfinished cognitive tension does not release so cognitive tension remains and that's why the information associated with that task also stays longer in our short term or working memory and that's exactly why thoughts about you know completing that task continuously pop up in our brain now how do we apply this zygonic effect to our learning so the zygonic effect is one of the main principles behind 
interleaving and interleaving is a scientifically proven evidence-based study technique which has been proven numerous times like time and time again so interleaving is like mixed practice so instead of focusing on just one subject on a given day try and mix that up and combine that with different subjects the way i apply this in medicine for example is that instead of studying let's say just cardiology on a given day I would do one topic from cardiology and then one topic from surgery and then one topic from dermatology and then one topic from pathology so I like basically mixing all these different subjects up and hence I have or I continuously do not remove that cognitive tension so the cognitive tension remains because the subjects remain unfinished even though I have done one topic from each subject and hence the information related to these topics will stick longer in my brain because of that cognitive tension. In mathematics, for example, you could apply this by solving different types of questions, you know, do one question from, I don't know, functions, and then one question from prob probability, one question from um, vectors, one question from, uh, I don't know, I don't even remember what topics we had in math because it's been such a long time, but though you get the point, I think. Now, you can also use the Zygonic effect to battle procrastination. Now, if you're thinking how, let me explain. So. The biggest problem with procrastination is that we struggle with getting started, right? So tell yourself that, okay, you know what, Arham, I will work on this um, thesis or whatever it may be for just 10 minutes and after these 10 minutes, I'm done. I will not work on this topic anymore for this given day. So I can sit down, work on the topic for just 10 minutes and then once I close the book and I head outside my room, the Thing is that the task is still unfinished and when the task is unfinished it the cognitive tension will remain in my brain and information related to this task will keep popping up in my brain until I go back to the task and try and really finish it so if we have the, the cognitive tension will make sure that I keep coming back to the task again and again until the task is finally done now the zygonic effect might sound extremely amazing and all that stuff but there is a huge caveat to this as well because if you start leaving a lot of tasks, like multiple tasks unfinished at the same time, it's going to eventually, you know, intrude your thoughts and start creating stress and really pray, like pray, not pray, but like pray on your peace of mind. So it's absolutely essential that we find the perfect balance between leaving a certain task unfinished and completing tasks. And for me, for example, when it comes to studying, I will not leave more than two tasks unfinished at the same time and this has worked amazingly for me. That's a wrap for today Sapiens. Now I have another video planned for you guys right over here which will surely add a lot of value to you guys. So I'll see you guys on the other side and before you leave make sure to subscribe.